Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So um, let's looking at this uh, different performance parameter and we are talking about overall efficiency, thermal efficiency, propulsion efficiency and we have looked at how they vary and an, another important who factor that we have looked at is the takeoff thrust because takeoff thrust is one of the important design parameter for any aircraft engine. Uh, as I already mentioned, this is the maximum thrust that one engine can produce and this uh, requires to be produced at the engine when it is on the static conditions or rather it just on the run at the ground level while it is going to take off with the full payload including the fuel uh, load, complete uh, fuel load and everything. So that is the maximum thrust that one engine can produce and how that can be varied that we have already seen. Now we are moving ahead with the other factors like range and endurance and all this. So what we will discuss the range of aircraft, okay. So that is we are going to look at it. So the range when we talk about range it means uh, it says how far an aircraft can travel with a given supply of fuel, given supply of fuel. So, this is also an important performance parameter parameter and the range actually the range depends on L by D ratio which is leap to drag ratio and uh, thrust generated by the engine. Now, if we ignore, let us say if we ignore the climb to and descent from the cruise altitude, uh, that means we are ignoring um, the climb and uh, climb and descent from the cruise altitude and we can only consider the then uh, consider the aircraft to be at level flight. So, when we talk about the level flight, the engine thrust and the vehicle drag must be equal and the lift on the aircraft should be equal to its weight. That means, if we look at the free body, let us say this is the aircraft, then this is dr uh, thrust, this is drag this is weight and this is lift. So, they should be equal. So, T would be D which is L into D by L which is M G by L by D because we have L is W is M G. Now, here M is the instantaneous mass, G is the 
acceleration due to gravity d is drag force which is l by d or rather leap to drag ratio then we have uh, thrust power that would be T u m g u by L by d and what we have seen that overall efficiency is T u m dot f q r. So, if we equate this term what we can write m dot f q r eta naught m g u by L by d. So, that gives us m dot f equals to m g u by overall q r L by d. Now, m dot f is the is also is part of overall air capped mass and uh, this is what m dot f is also getting consumed. So, d m by d t since fuel is consumed then what we can write that d m by d s d s by d t which is minus u d m by d s. So, where is one can assume that the this is the distance along the flight path. So, now we put this back in this uh, m dot f expression. So, what we get u d m by d s m g u q r l by d. Now, if we integrate from m 1 that is initial mass to m 2 which is final mass d m by m equals to 0 to s eta naught l by d d s. So, this becomes L n m 2 by m 1 minus d s eta naught L by d and that gives g s eta naught q r L by d. So, we get S is eta naught q r by g L by d L n m 1 by m 2. So, this is known as Brackett's range formula. So, what we see here that S is proportional to eta naught. That means, if eta naught is higher, so we have 
higher range. Now, if we consider f is small and pressure term is neglected, then what we can write eta naught equals to by m dot f q r, which is u e minus by f q r. So, now we take derivative to the eta naught with respect to u uh, for a given u e. So, what we can write this is 1 by f q u e minus 2 e is 0 that gives u is u e by 2. So, we have already seen that eta naught is max when u equals to u e by 2 and that is the same time also range is max because range is also proportional to the eta naught. Now, let us consider a turbofan engine which is it is essentially with double propellant stream. So, here we need to replace because turbofan has uh, one cold stream and hot stream. So, we need to uh, replace U e by the thrust averaged quantity like U e bar. So, where U e bar is defined as m dot a h plus m dot a c m dot a h plus m dot a c and fuel air ratio this is m dot f by m dot a c. So, this can be written as m dot f by m dot a h 1 plus m dot a c by m dot a h f by 1 plus So, using this average U e and this fuel air ratio one write that eta naught would be 1 plus m dot a c by m dot a h U e minus bar by f q r and into u. Again for a given u e eta naught max would be u e bar by 2. So, we can take the simple uh, derivative of that and find out that this would be u e by 2. So, eta naught also depends on flight Mach number. So, one can plot eta naught like let us say 1 
two, three, like this. This is flight Mach number. Point two, point four, point six. So eta naught, this varies like this. So eta naught increases as flight Mach number increases, and uh, at the same time what we can look at is the L by D variation, how that goes with flight Mach number 1, 2, 3, this is flight Mach number 10, 20, 30. So, So, this is how L by D with the flight Mach number and the other thing which Mach number this is 5, this is very eta naught into L by D. So, the range should increase with Mach number, however, L by D also depends on Mach number that means, range should increase with flight Mach number. However, L by D also depends on M. Now, L by D for supersonic is much less than subsonic and L by D is maximum at high subsonic. For the product of eta naught L by D, this is also maximum at high subsonic. Okay. Now, for a given fuel consumption rate, maximum range is obtained at high subsonic flight. So, a, for a given fuel consumption rate, maximum range is obtained at high subsonic flight. Now, the other things like commercial aircraft, commercial aircraft uh, fly at high subsonic speed for two reasons, one is economical and second is that efficient operations. So, this is where the all our civilian commercial aircraft that fly most of the time is the high subsonic. So, typically they operate around Mach 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 in that range. So, this is high subsonic range. So, what happens that higher Mach number shock fronts in front of air capped nose. Now, once that happens, if there is a shock formation, so we have already seen that across a shock, the T 
temperature increases. So, when the temperature would increase obviously, the thermal load will increase. So, thermal load on structure increases with m. So, to avoid this the payload also So, now this to thermal load or to be resistant the structure need to be heavier. So, the structure need to be heavier to withstand all this. This is one of the immediate consequence that one can have as soon as this is now obviously, having said that it is quite obvious that uh, supersonic flights are much less economical. For example, when Concorde can take 100 passenger and use more fuel than a Boeing 777, which can carry roughly around 500 passengers. So, they are not economical either. Again looking back to that, so looking back to that range equation, what we get or obtain that L by D Q R by G L n M 1 by M 2 and eta naught is T u by m dot q r. Okay. So, if we put this back, we can write S is L by D T by m dot u by g L n m 1 by m 2. So, which tells that T by M dot is an important parameter. Okay. So, T by M dot is an important parameter and this is the specific thrust. Okay. So, that means the thrust generated per unit mass of fuel consumed, mass of fuel consumed. Now, the other the reverse of it which is um, m dot by t this is called the thrust specific fuel consumption that is T s F c that means, fuel consumed per unit thrust. So, just to produce per one unit of thrust how much fuel is consumed that is called the T s F c and this is one of the parameter which is often provided for uh, providing an engine or configuration or something. I mean if you look at or search in um, internet how these engine specs are provided, any engine manufacturer they provides this kind of information the TFCC, uh, PRC, uh, efficiencies and then 
uh, how much thrust uh, it produces and such like that. Just to look at these things, this again these are generic term just to uh, extend these things for turbojet just to show you how things can be uh, written for TSFC T is m dot a f a u e minus u here since neglecting pressure term that is why you get this. So, our T S F C would be m dot f by t which is m dot f by m dot a 1 plus f u e minus u. Hence, one can say that this is t by m dot a 1 plus f e minus e. So, this is for a turbo jet how one can estimate the TSFC value. So, similarly for uh, turbo fan or turbo propeller let us say for turbo fan or turbo prop you can just replace this u e by u e average. So, one thing is clear here that T S F C depends strongly on u e that means, what is the exit velocity. Now, let us say for any turbine engine producing shaft power. So, for turbine engine producing shaft power, what happens? So, we defined another quantity called the B S F C which is M dot F by P S that is called this B S F C this is fuel consumption per unit of shaft power. to consider the thrust produced by hot gases also. So, this B S F C stand for brake specific fuel consumption, this is brake specific uh, fuel consumption. Now, equivalent brake specific fuel consumption. So, this is we write BSFC is m dot by P E S which is equivalent shaft power. So, that would be m dot F by P S plus T U. So, this is equivalent brake specific fuel consumption. Now, what we can see here that T is the thrust produced by the so, T 
is the thrust produced by the turbine engine exhaust. So, typically the engine brake specific fuel consumption would be some range like uh, typical range of this would be 0 0.27 to 0 0.36 roughly kg per kilowatt hour. So, that is the typical value of base FC which is there. So, you can um, see how TSFC and all these things uh, they can be uh, calculated and uh, also the base FC and range. So, we will stop here and continue this discussion in the next lecture.